Hey, welcome to Dan Bowman Photography. This week we're going to be talking about the Pentacon 6 medium format film camera. So I'm going to start off this episode with a little bit of background about the camera and then we'll dive into more specifics later in the episode. So for starters, the Pentacon 6, like I said, is a medium format camera. It takes 120 millimeter rolls of film like this, and it shoots a 6x6 centimeter negative. The Pentacon 6 was manufactured in East Germany from the 1950s up until about 1990. They don't make them anymore, but there are still a ton of them available on the used market. The Pentacon 6 is an SLR or single lens reflex style medium format camera. And it's also a modular system, which basically means you can swap out different pieces of the camera. So you can swap out different viewfinders, you can swap out the screen in the camera, and you can swap out different lenses. I will note that it doesn't have interchangeable backs, it just has one back that opens up and puts the film in, which I think is a disadvantage not having interchangeable backs, but it's still a great option for uh, people looking to get into medium format photography. So why would you want to buy the Pentacon 6? I think the first and main reason is that it is very cheap, and so it's a good introduction to medium format photography. Uh, the street price for Pentacon 6 right now is anywhere between two and three hundred US dollars. Sometimes you'll see them priced a little higher, but I think between two to three hundred dollars with an 80 millimeter lens is a pretty good deal for the Pentacon 6, and paying anything more than that is, eh, not really worth it. Another reason that the Pentacon 6 is a good option is that it's a fairly durable camera with great lenses. Uh, there are still a lot of lenses that are available for this camera, and some of them are just really sharp and fantastic, so I think it's really worth it to look into this camera if you're just getting into medium format photography. Alright, so without further ado, I'm going to give you a tour of the camera and show you some of the basic functions and features. Okay, so we're going to do an overview of the Pentacon 6 and show you some of the basic buttons and features that are on the camera. So we're going to start off with the shutter speed dial, which is on the left side of the camera. And the shutter speeds go from... Uh, the max shutter speed is 1 1,000th of a second, and it goes all the way to bulb, which is uh, for long exposures where you hold the shutter down manually. And it also has uh, one second, half a second, fourth of a second, eighth, uh, fifteenth, and several other shutter speeds. Uh, this marking right here, the little like lightning bolt, that is the flash sync speed. Uh, the max uh, shutter speed for flash sync on this camera is a thirtieth of a second. And on top of the uh, shutter speed dial, there's also an ISO reminder dial. Uh, just to remind you what the ISO of your film is in the camera. It doesn't actually set the ISO. So moving over to the right side of the camera, we have your film advance here. So then when you press the shutter, you turn this to advance to the next frame. And right here, this dial is sort of a another reminder dial that sort of reminds you the color temperature of the film that you put in there. So there's black and white and several other markings on there. It doesn't actually do anything, so it's not crucial. Right here is the shutter release button, and it is threaded for a cable release if you want to do long exposures. Um, so that's pretty cool, or if you just want to reduce camera shake. So obviously just pressing down the shutter takes your picture, and you use the film advance to advance to the next frame. So next here in the middle, we've got the viewfinder, and right now I have the prism viewfinder, which um, you might be able to see through the lens there a little bit. It's kind of hard. So basically what the prism viewfinder does is it reverses the image in the viewfinder so that you see uh, the scene just as you see it outside. Normally with the waist level viewfinder, the image is sort of flipped horizontally. And like I said before, the viewfinder is interchangeable. So this isn't always easy to get it off because mine sort of sticks, but you just pull these little, push these levers which are on each side back and you can lift this off of the camera 
and you can see the waist level viewfinder. There's some lights and sort of what the scene is. And like I said, this is flipped horizontally when you're looking through the waist level viewfinder. So this is what the waist level viewfinder looks like when it's off the camera and opened up. And you basically just pop that right down on there. Just has four pins that you just line up and pop it on there. Um, and this sort of shields um, the viewfinder from light so that it's a little easier to see in broad daylight. There's also this magnifier here for critical focus. And if you pop this, I think this window, you can lift this open and it has sort of a sports, what's called the sports viewfinder. So you can sort of frame up your shot uh, with the magnifier um, if you don't have time to look down through the viewfinder. But again, this isn't really a fast camera, so it's probably not the best for sports, but it was manufactured a long time ago, so that's what they were doing at that time. So I'm just going to take this off here again to show you the screen a little bit better. Now, the screens are interchangeable. I don't know, you probably can't see this very well, but this screen is sort of rounded. It is the standard uh, viewfinder screen, but you can buy other screens and replace it in there. Uh, just make sure that you have the right wiring to put in because if you're putting a flat screen in, it's going to use different wiring uh, to hold the screen down flat. So in the center of the screen, you can probably see the split level focusing viewfinder. And this is what you're going to look at to uh, focus the image and see if it's in focus. And basically what it does is it splits the image in half horizontally at a point and you basically have to just line up a straight line until it's all matching up. It's kind of uh, funky, took me a long time to get used to it, uh, but that's how you focus with this camera. So moving around to the front of the camera, this is the lens and the uh, lens mount. So to take the lens off the camera, you just have to twist this black ring and the lens pops right off. And then when you're putting it on, you just line up the notches until they're in and twist the ring back until it is tight and that holds the lens onto the camera. So this is the 80 millimeter lens and it goes from f2.8 is the widest aperture on the camera and it goes up to or stops down to f22. To focus the camera you just move this ring and it has a distance scale on there that is listed in both meters and feet. So it goes from, uh, let's see, one meter all the way up to infinity, um, and 30 meters or 100 feet is sort of the one that's right before infinity. So also on the front of the camera, below the shutter button is a self timer. So you just pull this down and then press the shutter and you'll have your self timer going and you'll hear the shutter click and that's your self timer. Um, I've read reports that this thing's not totally reliable. Sometimes the self timer goes off before it should, but um, it's an option there if you're interested in using that. So down here right next to the lens, there is a flash sync port. Now, like I said earlier, the flash sync speed of this camera, the fastest flash sync speed is 1 30th of a second. And so you basically need a tripod to uh, sync a regular flash. You can use a flash gun or the old flash bulbs, the one time use ones, and that you can sync at any speed. But because this is a focal plane shutter where the shutter opens in two motions, um, it's something that sinks at a fairly slow speed. So also on the bottom here we have the tripod mount if you'd like to mount this camera on a tripod. And just a note on using this camera with a tripod, it's important to note that your you should check to see if your tripod head is rated to hold the weight of this camera with the viewfinder and the lens and any accessories you might have. Um, when I bought this camera there was actually a piece of a tripod from a previous owner lodged in there because it snapped off in the tripod mount so you got to be careful with that. I also want to note that on the side, each side of the camera body there are two lugs 
that you can attach a strap to if you want to put a strap with this camera. All right, so now let's open up the back of the camera and show you what's inside. So there's a little notch right here that you can just push down and that releases the camera back, which you can just open up. Um, as you can see, this has a cloth shutter. Now you don't really want to press down on that or do anything because it is kind of delicate, but um, that is a cloth shutter. Now there's the take-up spool right here and it has these little pins that you can just pull out and twist and you can take your spool out and in order to load it you need an empty spool on the right side of the camera so you can just load it up into there and then it twists to uh, and you'll put your 120 millimeter roll film right into here to load the camera so now I'm going to show you how to load film into your Pentacon 6 medium format camera. So first we'll pull this lever down to open up the back of the camera. And like I said before, if you don't have your take up spool on the right side, you'll want to move it over there to load up the camera. So we'll take our roll and just open this up. And then you're gonna take this little piece that's wrapped around here and just pull that right off and throw that away. So we're gonna take this notch here and open it up and turn it until it's held open in place. And then you'll just put your roll down into there and snap that shut. So it's kind of tough to see but I usually put my thumb here to hold and keep tension on the film as I pull it across the shutter. Then you're gonna take your paper and just slot it down into the notches here on this side. And this is something I always struggle with because I have big fingers and not super nimble. So we'll just load that in and I'll tighten this up a little bit. Now there's a notch right here on the side that you need to pull back to release the frame advance here. And then you're going to use this in sort of small motions here to load your film on. Now I always keep my thumb back on the film there to sort of keep it in line and keep it tight. And you want to go until the start line is lined up with this white dot there. So now I'm going to close the camera back and press this notch up there to lock it. Now what you want to do is with the cap on the lens, make sure you put that on there, you want to press the shutter down and advance it four times. So I'm going to do this two, three, Four. and now we're ready to shoot. So the marker should be right there on the first dot and that's to indicate that you are ready to take the first shot. And next I'll show you how to unload the camera. So now I'm going to show you how to unload film from your Pentacon 6 once you finish shooting a roll. So after you've taken 12 shots on a 120 millimeter roll of film, the film advance lever will lock and you won't be able to advance it any further. Now there's this little tab here on the side that you pull back to release the film advance and then you should be able to advance the film. So what you want to do now um, is with your lens cap on, you just press the shutter and continue to advance the film until it comes off of the uh, original spool and onto the take-up spool. Now you'll see it's probably totally off at this point because the film advance is going very easy. So what you want to do is open up the back and the exposed film will be on the take-up spool. And what you'll do is you'll just take this and remove it from the camera and then you'll seal it up and you'll be ready to develop it. 
and your original spool that the film was on will still be on the other side. So what you'll want to do before you load up the next roll is take it out and then put it back on this side. And you'll be ready to load up another roll. And that's how you take film out of the Pentacon 6. So there it is, the Pentacon 6. Now is this a camera that I would recommend buying and would I buy it again if I were just getting into medium format photography? I think I would definitely buy this camera again. I think it's really a great price and a great option if you're looking to make more highly detailed images that you can get from 35mm. And if you're looking to step up into medium format, I think the Pentacon 6 is a great option. Now that being said, I don't really see myself using this camera that much moving forward and I'm actually considering selling it. Um, I think it is a great starter camera and it is a great medium format camera but there's just something about operating the camera that I just haven't quite gotten used to or don't really like and I'm starting to look at more uh, expensive medium format systems. I've been looking at uh, 6x7 systems too because I'm not totally crazy about the square format. Uh, but that's not really a knock against the Pentacon 6. I think that it was really great for me to get into medium format photography and I've been shooting with the camera for about nine months but I think moving forward I will probably consider some other systems and try something new out. But that's the great thing about photography is that you can always um, buy new gear or sell your old gear and try out new things and so that's probably what I'm going to do with the Pentacon 6. So what's your favorite medium format camera? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Um, I'd be interested to know what you guys are shooting with or maybe what was your first medium format camera. As always, if you like these videos, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And please follow me on Instagram. I'll put my handle right there. It's at Dan Bullman. Uh, I also have a Snapchat, which is at Dan Bullman 1. And so if you want to follow some of my shenanigans and adventures, uh, please follow me on those social media platforms. So the rest of June is going to be Instant Film Month. I've got four episodes that I'm going to be doing about instant film. So if you love shooting instant film, you love Polaroids or Instax, um, I'm going to have a lot of content for you guys that I think you'll really enjoy. Now if you hate instant film, then sorry, I guess I'll see you in July or something. But. You know, I'm really excited about these videos, and they'll be coming out over the next four weeks. All right, folks, we'll see you next time. This has been another episode of Dan Bowman Photography. Peace.